For many organizations, governments and businesses, remote employees are the new reality, as we know. This has also seen cyber criminals capitalize on the COVID-19 crisis by luring employees to click on malicious emails, weaker protections on home IT equipment, and psychological factors such as distractions and anxiety have helped increase the risk of a successful ransomware attack. So what can we do to overcome this threat? We need more information to help us answer that question. We're joined by Anthony Stitt from Threat Quotient this morning. Good morning to you, how are you? I'm well, Adrian, how are you? Yeah, really well. So we talk a lot about this. Last year, it was almost every second week that we were talking about it. So the information is getting out there. But my first question to you, uh, what's the biggest cyber threat that's facing businesses, do you think, this year? Oh, look, for businesses this year, um, we've had to, to get used to a new reality, which is uh, remote workers. Um, and for, for most of the company's employees uh, being remote to the business and not necessarily being protected by the normal corporate um, uh, layers of security protections that, 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 that are in place. Sure. I think that makes employees more susceptible. Um, there's a you know, weaker at home environment and potentially some psychological factors at play uh, with with people maybe not being as focused on on work and and um, the security at work that they might have been prior, uh, as you pointed out, criminals are, are, are capital, capitalizing on COVID nineteen topics to to lure employees. Um, there's there's nothing new about criminals um, taking uh, newsworthy items, and certainly COVID has been a has been a, a great clickbait for employees. Um, but of course, you know. Ultimately, what the criminals are trying to achieve in terms of your question around what's the biggest cyber threat, um, obviously ransomware is big. Um, uh, that's financially motivated, but equally along that line, criminals are often after banking credentials from from, from individuals or or even for businesses to to uh, to do money transfers and um, wire money to to scammers. But you know, equally, I think employees are the first line of defense as well. So um, they're very important in terms of spotting and being able to report on, on this sort of activity. So just on that, because we do talk about the role of the employer, but what about the employee? Um, what can they do? What role can they play to prevent some of these attacks? Well, look, you know, employees don't need to be technical email analysts. They don't need to help to understand how to pick apart an email um, to, to analyze it from a from a, from a technical compromised uh, perspective. But it turns out that while getting a machine to spot a fake email actually is quite quite difficult, especially something that's new and has been uh, constructed especially, yep. uh, getting a human to do that is, is, actually, is actually quite straightforward. And if you look at our trajectory over the last maybe 10 years, we all have gotten much better at spotting fake and, and scam and phishing emails. And so simply giving employees um, the ability to be able to report that, uh, and you know, of course, not not falling for the scam in the first place. Um, that's that's first part of it. But the second part is um, uh, teaching uh, employees about uh, how to report and and the benefits and and the reasons why reporting uh, is uh, is good for the organisation. So just uh, finally to sort of wrap up, because a lot of this info is super important, but it can you know, go over people's heads in a way. So what maybe one or two pieces of advice would you have for businesses and employees going into this year? What, what can they do now uh, to prevent this? So I talked about employees and the role that they fulfill, um, especially around um, visibility and reporting. Taking that information and providing it to the business and the business providing employees a an easy way to report uh, phishing and scam emails is, 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 a, is a great first step. Now, of course, the business needs to have a certain uh, process and some skills in order to, to take those, uh, take that information and, and analyze it. Yep. And, you know, it's about understanding um, getting a better idea about who is attacking the business, um, what their motivations are. And that information needs to be put somewhere, much like a library, which is what we do, um, in order to store it and, and have it uh, automated and leveraged throughout um, that business moving forward. So that even if just one employee has been targeted, that the organization gets the, the benefit protection mm -hmm. from the fact that, that that employee has been able to report that incident.
So yeah. the business needs to make it easy, but then they need the skills in order to, to um, follow through with that and yep. get organizational protection. It's great advice. And we'll definitely chat with you throughout the year on this because it's an evolving story. Thank you so much, Anthony, for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yes, you too. Thank you, Adrian.